Hello, Sharif here. And uh, today I want to talk to you about um, the country of Sri Lanka and what's happening there and relate that back to all that we've been talking about regarding the wave. Um, <clears throat> Sri Lanka is in the middle of an economic and, and political meltdown. And uh, it's something that I could see the handwriting on the wall decades ago when I was working uh, in Sri Lanka with the organization Sarvodia, trying to get people to stop killing each other and start recognizing that they have an awful lot in common and being successful at that for a while. Um, but the uh, uh, Rajapaksa brothers uh, basically took over the government, uh, were voted into power because they were strong and they were leading us. And when they came into power, they basically stole everything that wasn't laying, that wasn't nailed down. And now the government has no money. Um, people can't afford uh, even the basics of life. Um, uh, cooking oil, gasoline for transportation. They can't afford electricity. They have rolling blackouts because they can't keep the power plants going. There's not enough food. And people are taking to the streets and the Rajapaksa brothers, uh, uh, Mahinda and his brother Gotaba, uh, they kind of traded off um, being president and prime minister and Gotaba was defense secretary for a while. It's just, it's kind of like a, a family racket um, uh, that they are, that they, they're not the only country where the leaders saw themselves or see themselves as above the law. We invent words for them, uh, kleptocracy. Um, you steal every, the government is based on stealing whatever you can steal, uh, you can get your hands on. Um, and down in, uh, when I was in um, uh, Republic of South Africa, uh, they had a new term called state capture. When you've stolen so much, you've actually stolen the entire state that belongs to you now. And that's where um, uh, former President Zuma uh, had, had, had his hands on the billions and billions of dollars that um, rightfully long, belong to the uh, South African people. Now, the thing I, I, wanna, I want to stress with this is that these weren't uh, di dictators that were holding power through the, through the barrel of a gun. These were democracies. These folks got voted into power and uh, once they came into power went, I was about to say went crazy, but they didn't go crazy. There, they had this value structure ingrained in them from the beginning their value structure was clear. Their value structure was get more money. How much more? Well, the question is how much more you got. Get more money and then get more money and then get more money because money is our highest value. In that, they're not any different from most of the people who are in this society, the, 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 the epitome of, a, of breaker values is make more money, whether you need it or not. Make more money, whether you, you could have so much money you can't even spend it, but make more. And the purpose of making this money is really clear. It's there to fill up your heart. 
It's there to fill up your heart because there's something missing. You know that there's something missing. You know there's something empty inside. And rather than address it, rather than even think about it, let's just make some more money. Let's steal more, buy more, and then steal some more so you can buy some more. These were democracies that did this. So being a democracy does not prevent this from happening to anyone. What we need is a new, we need new governing structures. But those governing structures have to be based on civilizational structures. What is the nature of the civilization that we are, uh, that we are living in What's the nature of the society we want to leave to our children and our grandchildren? And believe me, none of the leaders of this society right now are asking that question. The mainstream folks in the, in, on, on the left and the right, they're not asking that question. The alternative folks who are throwing the rocks through the windows and setting things on fire, they're not asking that question either. There has to be a force where we begin to ask and answer those questions. And we know who that force has to be. It's got to be you and me. We, we want to think that we can, we can talk about this another day. We can talk about this next week. We can talk about this next year. Oh, let, let, let's put together a symposium where we start looking at the issues involved, etc. And if you think we've got that kind of time, you have not been paying attention to the other videos I've been doing on the wave. We don't long we no longer have that time. What we've got to do is get active right now. We need to create a whole new model. And we can need to say to the people, if you're program is based on violence. It's not my program and I don't want any part of it. If your program is based on us versus them, that's not my program and I want no part of yours. We need to be able to say, if your program is based on making more money, beyond, the, beyond uh, any, any need for money. That's not my program, and I want no part of your program. So, so we can look at what we don't want, but let's start looking at what we do. We need to develop a model where we're being flexible, adaptable, fear-free. We have no fear of what's going on. We need to move beyond what I call the three I's, individualism, ideologies, and institutions. We need to develop societal models based on compassion, societal models based on authenticity, of being true to who you are, societal models based on inclusivity, societal models based on spirituality, and you know that I always say, as soon as I say the S word, uh, I am not talking about religion. Uh, whatever religion you have, great. If you don't have a religion, great. And that doesn't mean that you can't be a spiritually driven person, a person who's driven by the transcendent. And we need to have a value structure that stresses life first, not money first, not my group over your group first, but all of life, all of human life and all the life of all others. If we create a society that looks like that, we'll be creating a human society that's never existed on this planet before and the society that will get us through this moment into 
our next moment into the next thing that's happening for us. Look, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to you participating with me in that. More later. Bye.